This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show in Jackson, Mississippi, the majority black city where tens of thousands of residents who went for two to three weeks without water have now had their water restored in most cases. But in videos that have gone viral online, many say it's brown water. That's coming out of their taps. Meanwhile, the capital city remains under a boil water notice as children return to school. The latest water crisis stemmed from a flooded water treatment plant, but has been decades in the making. As residents look for solutions, Mississippi's Republican Governor Tate Reeves says, quote, privatization is on the table, unquote. But privatizing Jackson's water system may be part of what led to the crisis. For more, we look at how Jackson contracted with the German multinational conglomerate Siemens in 2010 to overhaul the city's water infrastructure and install new water meters for its billing system. The system turned out to be faulty. Siemens said it went, quote, above and beyond its contractual obligations to help address the city's well-known challenges, which are complex, unquote. Reporter Judd Legum lays all of this out in his piece headlined, This Multi-Billion-Dollar Corporation Exacerbated the Water Crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. It's published in the independent newsletter Popular Information, dedicated to accountability journalism. Judd Legum, welcome back to Democracy Now! We just have five minutes. Lay out what you found. Tell us about Siemens and tell us about this brown water that is coming out of people's uh, faucets now. Well, I think the brown water is a reflection of the really system that's been deteriorating now uh, for decades. Uh, the story that I reported uh, tracked how, uh, starting in 2010, Siemens came to the city of Jackson, who was already suffering uh, under a very uh, faulty water system at that time and said, we have a solution. You can pay us $90 million. That's the largest contract uh, signed at that time in city history. We will install these new automated uh, water meters. This will not only pay for itself, but generate extra revenue, which you can invest back into the water system. They came to the city offering a solution. But this contract ended up being a disaster. Not only uh, did it not meet their promises, the automated meters didn't work really at all. Uh, many people stopped getting bills. Those who got bills uh, received ones that were far too high and, and did not pay them. Um, and so it created massive deficits uh, and ultimately led to a lawsuit uh, that was filed by the city. and. Uh, Ultimately, uh, they agreed to a settlement. Siemens agreed to a settlement. But in the interim, there was essentially a lost decade where the system deteriorated further and there were really no substantial investments made. And that's part of the reason why we see uh, what's going on today, which is a boil water order, uh, undrinkable water, and probably more trouble uh, in the months and years ahead. And talk about the role of U.S. Consolidated, a company owned by former Mississippi state politician and lobbyist Tom Wallace. Uh, well, that part of the issue uh, with this contract uh, was that Siemens had agreed to uh, get a fairly high percentage, I believe it was 58 percent, of minority-owned uh, businesses. Uh, but instead of finding qualified subcontractors to do this, uh, the city alleged uh, that it essentially partnered with shell companies who did no work, including this very highly connected uh, former um, legislator who, who owns U.S. Consolidated, essentially were just act as a pass-through. They would buy the meters uh, from one company, sell them to the city uh, for uh, a markup. Uh, another company would install them. Uh, so essentially, this one company, U.S. Consolidated, was paid $20 million for, uh, according to the city's lawsuit, essentially doing no work at all. What happened to the $90 million from the settlement? Why is Jackson's water system still such a disaster? Well, a third of it went to the lawyers uh, that filed uh, the suit. And as I mentioned, there were large uh, deficits that were created because of the inability to collect fees uh, while these meters were in place. So some of it had to go uh, to fulfill those deficits. And then, although the cost of the contract was $90 million, Jackson obviously didn't have $90 million sitting around, they issued bonds. The total cost of those bonds were $200 million. 
And the issuance of those bonds require, requires them uh, to maintain a reserve fund. So between the lawyers, the deficit were created, and the reserve fund, there was very little left, less than $10 million uh, from this $90 million settlement uh, that Jackson had uh, to reinvest uh, in the water and system. Siemens and at this Seaman yeah. saying, Judge uh, Seaman saying, Judd, um, that they went above and beyond their contractual obligations. Well, uh, that's what they're saying. Obviously, they agreed to pay ninety million, uh, the full amount of the contract. Uh, so they must have they, they acknowledged at least implicitly there uh, that this didn't go well. Uh, when I contacted Siemens looking for comments on what's going on now, they said uh, due to the nature of the settlement, they couldn't discuss it any further. What's next, and what has most shocked you in your research? We have thirty seconds. Well, uh, next, they're going to try to find uh, the money to pay for this. So far, the state has been very reticent uh, to do so. There are There is federal money coming in uh, through uh, the infrastructure bill uh, last year, uh, through the American Recovery Act, and it's a matter of convincing the state uh, to allow those funds to flow to Jackson. That would at least be a start in doing what's now seen as up to $2 billion uh, in improvements necessary to get clean water to the people of Jackson. And Governor Reeves saying privatization's the answer? G Governor Reeves is now looking at privatization. Uh, and so, you know, we may see history, history repeating itself. We'll have to see.